Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Venti. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are starting Euclidean Geometry. I'm using the Mind Action series. We're doing the Grade 10 textbook. This is exercise 1, which is found on page 246 up until 249. Now this is part 1 of a number of videos. And in today's question, we are only going to answer question D and question E. Green looks different because on the right hand side is where I'm going to write and on the left is going to be the images that we're working with. Now question A deals with our first set of rules which are straight line rules. For question B we are going to use the rules known as fun and for question C in the exercise you are going to use the rules of triangles. Question A, B, C I am not going to work on because this is assumed knowledge. I am guessing that you know this from grade nine. However, if you want me to do a video on ABC, just let me know and I will look into it. Let's start with D. So this is where things get more uh, interesting. This is where we get to grade 10 work. So the image for question D is on the left hand side. We have A, B, C, D. These are parallel lines. I know they are parallel lines because they give me these symbols. So I know that these two lines are parallel to each other. Next up, um, I have a couple of triangles. E, P, F, which form a triangle. And then I have P, F, S, which form a triangle. And then I have R and Q, which are extensions of PF and SF. Now, there's a lot of information on this page. They tell me that angle P3 is 50 degrees and angle F5 is 80 degrees. All right, so that is just what they give me. Let's go to the question. The question says to me, what is the size of angle E2? So there's different ways of doing this. If you are a novice, meaning that this is the first time you're doing this, I would tell you, take your list of rules and go through them one by one and see what applies. The more you engage with geometry, the easier it will be for you to see the rules of geometry. But if we're starting with our straight line rules, then the first thing we will start off with is the rule for angles on a straight line. So yes, we have a straight line, E1 plus E2 equals 180. That doesn't help us because we don't know what E1 is. In this instance, we cannot really start where we want to end. We have to start somewhere else. So what we're going to do is we are going to start with the angle they give us. They give us P5. Now based on uh, the N in fun, I know that P3 is equal to F1. So I'm going to start by saying, Angle P3 is equal to angle F1, and that is equal to 50 degrees. And my reason for this is that they are alternate angles, and they are equal to each other. And I can tell you that angle A or line AB is parallel to line CD. So my parallel lines are AB and CD. So now I know that this one is 50 degrees. That helps me. Next, I can see that this line is equal in length to that line. In triangle PEF, E2, that's an angle, is equal to angle F1, which is equal to 50 degrees. And my reason for this is it's an isosceles, isosceles triangle, or the other way of writing the reason is to write angles of opposite equal sides. So we know that these sides are equal in length and therefore the angles opposite them are also equal in length. So we have officially answered the question. We have answered the question E2 is equal to 50 degrees. That's the answer. The next question is saying, can you prove that EP is parallel to RS? So they want us to prove this is parallel to that. And we know from the rules of parallel lines that we can use F, 
corresponding U co-interior or N alternate angles. So what do I notice first? I notice that this is vertically opposite that one. So I can start out by saying that F2 is equal to F5, which is equal to 80 degrees. And my reason is that vertically opposite angles are equal to each other. So I now know that F2 is that. Now I can say that F1 plus F2 is equal to 50 plus 80, which is equal to 130 degrees. That's just basic math. All right, so we know that this one is 80, 50, 80. Now I'm going to say that um, E2 plus F1 plus F2 now this is 1, is going to be equal to, let's calculate that, 50 degrees plus 130 degrees, which equals to 180 degrees. So now that I have proven that this is equal to 180, I can state that, therefore, co-interior angles equal 180 degrees. And because the co-interior angles or the sum of the co-interior angles equal 180 degrees, therefore EP is parallel to RS. So now we have proven it true. EP is parallel to RS. Question number three on this image is asking me what is the size of S1? So we can figure out the size of S1 by using a triangle. I can say in triangle PSF, that's where I'm working. I am going to say P3 plus F2 plus S1 is equal to 180 degrees. And my reason for that is the sum of angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. So P3 is 50 plus F2 is 80 plus S1 is unknown equals 180 degrees. 50 and 80 is 130 plus S1 equals 180 degrees minus 130 minus 130. Angle S1 is equal to 50 degrees. That is one way of doing it. So. We have proven or answered the question and we are happy with this. Having proven that, we can now conclude that uh, triangle PFS or PSF, this is an isosceles triangle and the reason we can say that is because we have opposite angles are equal, are equal in size. My opposite angles are P5 and SP3 and S1. So that is the end of question D. Now we're going to do E. Question E1 says calculate the size of X, Y and Z. So let's start with X. What do we see? We see X is over here and over here. And automatically we can see that we are dealing with co-interior angles. Because this is parallel to that, it is a valid co-interior angle. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to say angle U2 plus angle Q are equal to 180 degrees because the sum of co-interior angles equal 180. So now I'm going to substitute the values. I'm going to say 6x plus 30 degrees plus x plus 10 degrees equal 180 degrees. So I've got 7x plus 40 degrees equal 180 degrees minus 40 on both sides. 7 
why is my pen not writing 7x equals 140 degrees divide by 7 on both sides x equals 20 degrees so that's the first thing that we have answered x is 20 now because we are proficient mathematicians we are going to answer the question uh, more than what they're asking for right so if i know that x is 20 then i know angle q is going to be 20 plus 10 so angle q is equal to 30 degrees got that 180 minus 30 degrees so that's going to be 150 this side is 150 okay so i'm happy with that we've answered for x let's do y so what we can see is that y is going to be angles on a straight line with u2 and u1 so u1 plus u2 are equal to 180 degrees my reason is the sum of angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees okay i know that u2 is y plus u1 is 150 degrees because I just proved it over here where I said u2 is 150 degrees. So that equals to 180 degrees. y is 180 minus 150. y is 30 degrees. So, and remember y is u1, so this is 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Okay. Happy with that? Let's do the next one. We want to solve for Z. So what do I see? I see that PU is equal to PR. This is given. And because this is true, the result of this is I have an isosceles triangle, right? So therefore, I can say that angle R1 is equal to angle U1, which is equal to 30 degrees. And my reason here is either isosceles triangle or you can use the reason of saying opposite angles of equal lines. Okay, so I've got an isosceles triangle. These two are equal to each other. Now I know this is 30 as well. So that's the first statement that I make. Now I am going to work in the triangle. I'm going to say angle P plus angle U1 plus angle R1 are equal to 180 degrees and the reason is the sum of the angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. Now that I have that, angle P1 is Z, that's what I want to solve for. U1 is 30 and R1 is 30 equal 180 degrees. So angle Z is equal to 180 minus 60 degrees angle z is equal to 120 degrees that is my solution so this is 120 okay we have answered question number one we've solved for x we've solved for y we've solved for z question two in e is asking us to prove that pq is parallel to rt PQ is this one. I want us to prove this is parallel to this. Now, how do we do that? They give us a statement. They say R3 is equal to 2x minus 10. And everything else we have on the picture, we're going to use all the information. So before we get started, we know that x is 20, right? So R3 is 2 times 20 minus 10 degrees which is 40 minus 10 degrees, which is 30 degrees. So we know that R3 is 30 degrees based on what we just calculated. Now, because R3 is 30, that means that R2 is 30 as well. Can we check? We're saying R2 is equal to R3 equals to 30 degrees. And the reason is vertically opposite angles are equal to each other so we're saying this is 30 as well so what are we going to do we are going to say that in order for us to prove parallel lines we can use the u in co-interior angles 
So let's go ahead and do that. We are trying to prove that angle P plus R1 plus R2 equals 180 degrees. If they do, then we have parallel lines. So angle P is 120 degrees, R1 is equal to 30 degrees, and R2 is equal to 30 degrees. That gives me a total of 180 degrees. So I've just proven that. Therefore, the sum of co-interior angles are equal to 180 degrees. And if that is true, which it is, then PQ is parallel to RT. Okay, that's it. We have done question D and question E. Thank you for watching. I wish you all the best. I hope that you understood. Please, as you are doing geometry, do not get discouraged. Have your list of, of um, rules that you go through. Go through the rules one by one. And remember, the more you practice, the better you will get. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask me in class or you can send me a text. Have a great day. Bye-bye.